Hello, my friends, this is Eric Parker with One Number Tableau Experts. In this week's video, we're gonna cover how can you create a dynamic date range parameter filter for your Tableau worksheets and dashboards so that it will always keep a set range of data and you can sort of adjust it at will. Um, so let's dive into this. Uh, if you want the kind of quick idea, the quick solution for this, you're probably just looking for what's called a relative date filter, okay? Let me show you briefly how you could create something like that. So. If I put my day of order date on my column shelf and sales on my row shelf, and let's say I want this thing anchored so that it's always displaying the last 30 days worth of data, Tableau's actually made that pretty easy. All I need to do is put a copy of my order date field on my filters card, choose my relative date option, okay? And then I would just pick something like last 30 days. It's gonna show me 30 days worth of data. Now, not only that, but an end user, if you show that filter, an end user can also adjust how many days they're looking at. So if they wanna go back 45 days, they can do that. Um, now, there's a couple of things that are a little bit limiting about the way that a relative date filter works that may not make it the best solution for you, okay? So the first thing is that you, you can hard code a different anchor date, but your user can't change that anchor date. So what do I mean by that? Um, I mean that the anchor date is gonna default to today's date. And back when you are setting up the filter the first go around, you can anchor it to a different day physically, or like, I don't know what the right way to say that is, but you can pick one, but it's not dynamic. So you can't say, oh, make this based on the maximum day in my data set, or make this based on, you know, last week. Um, so that's one issue. And then the user also can't change it. So let's say the user wants to look at, you know, the last 30 days as of the same period last year, and they want to change their anchor point. They can't do that. So that's where I'm saying that the ability to do that, it might, it might be nice to kind of create a parameter and a calculation, which gives us the ability to totally have control and customize the anchor date and the range. And the cool thing is with dynamic parameters, we can even make that anchor date, you know, automatically update to either today's date or to look at the maximum day in the data set. Okay, that's a lot of background. Hopefully that makes some sense. Um, let's uh, let's dive into this. So I've actually got a, a dashboard sort of preloaded with a lot of this going on already. Um, it's just using a relative date filter to look at the last 30 days, okay? But let's say I wanna create a parameter which would, um, you know, be the anchor date instead. So I'll call this my anchor date parameter. You call it whatever you want when you make it. Uh, my data type will be date and currently set to today's value, that's fine. Okay, so let's show that parameter. Now, how do we make this parameter dynamic? I don't want it to just always be 10, 20, 20, 23. When I publish this thing, you know, next month, November 15th, I wanted to say November 15th, 2023, right? So there is an ability, let me hit the drop down and edit the parameter. There is an ability to have the value update when the workbook opens, okay? Right now it's based on the current value, but we might want it to be based on a calculation. So a couple of different options there. I'll call this our default anchor date calc, okay? So if you just want it to always be based on today's date, that's easy. You just write the function, your calculation as today, say okay, hit our drop down, uh, next to our parameter, say edit, and the current value, it will, it will uh, you know, look up the default anchor date value. So that way, you know, I publish this, I open it tomorrow, it'll say October 21st instead of October 20th. Um, if your data, you know, maybe it doesn't refresh every day, or maybe you don't always have a record every day, or maybe it's one day behind, anchoring on today may not be the best option for you in that case. Um, if that's your reality, then what you may want to do is to write a calculation to figure out what is the maximum uh, order date, right? So I might say something like, I think order date's a date and time. So just to be safe, I'm gonna convert it to a date here. So I'd say, what's the max order date? So actually this alone is not gonna work. Watch this, if I say okay, and then go to edit my anchor date parameter, it's not gonna pop up as an option. So let me try and do my best to explain what's going on with that. Uh, where the heck did that go? Default anchor date. So Tableau needs a value which returns the same value throughout the entire column. So when you write the calculation today, there's 10,000 rows of data in this data set, it's just today's date over and over again. 
max date of order date, that's a little tricky. It's an aggregated calculation. And so it depends on what dimensions are we talking about? So we're gonna use a, a little age old trick here, a level of detail calculation. We're just gonna wrap that entire aggregated expression in curly braces. That's like telling Tableau, give me a database level of detail or an overall fixed, basically just what is the maximum date in the entire data set and just repeat that bad boy over and over again for every row of data. So now if I edit this once again, it works. Okay. So then if the, if the maximum date in the data set was October 18th, it would default to October 18th instead of October 20th, today's date. So there you go. That's probably a good solution for a lot of you out there. If that last little piece about the level of detail, if you're like, what? Uh, we're going to drop a link in the description below to a video we've done about that specific topic. So you can check that out. Okay. Okay, so, so far so good. Now, how do we get this to anchor on the last 30 days based on our parameter? So I'm gonna create a calculated field. We'll start with a hard-coded 30 days and then we'll make this kind of more dynamic as we go. So I'll say, uh, is the date diff in day between my order date? I'll make sure that's, it's kind of annoying. It's a date and time, that's, that's my own fault. Um, is the difference between that and my anchor date less than or equal to 30 days? And I think, think about how to say this. Because the anchor date, because we could kind of move that into the past, I think I also need to say, and the date diff is greater than or equal to zero, because I don't want to accidentally keep too much data. I'm just looking for, um, I'm just looking for like an exactly a 30 day range based on this anchor date. So let's give that a whirl. And uh, okay, anchor day, 1020. Okay, let me do this really quick. Let me do month, day, year of my order date field on the row shelf. And then let's put that, that field that I just created. What the, what did I call that thing? Oh, last 30 days, that's right. Like, where is this thing? Well, I know what it's called, there it is. Okay, last 30 days, there, okay. So false, false, false. Okay, so the last 30 days should end with today's date and you can see it goes back to September 20th. Uh, today's October 20th. That makes sense. That's exactly 30 days. Cool, so that is working. So now as I change the anchor date, let's go ahead and show that parameter here so we can see this in action. Let me set it to September 30th because then we October 1st should be false if we do that. September 30th, and it's very subtle, so bear with me here. Um, oh, reset the range, let's do this. Okay, yeah, cool. So now September 30th is true and October 1st is false. So that's great, my user can have that anchor date. Now, how do I change the number of days that they can look back? We could do that with another parameter. So I'm gonna create a parameter and I'll call this, uh, you know, days or, you know, last n days. And this will just be an integer and I'll just give my users some sort of free range here. Maybe this could be anywhere from the last, you know, one to the last 100 days. So let's go ahead and show that. And then let's edit our calculation last 30 days. I'm gonna edit this and instead say last N days. So instead of this being less than or equal to 30, this would be equal, less than or equal to the um, parameter we just created, last N days parameter. So now it's only gonna go back uh, one day. Although, actually this is funny, it's showing two days even though we only said go back one day from today's date because technically it's keeping today and yesterday. So you may need to maneuver that calculation a little bit um, depending on you know how you want that to work or maybe I should say zero and then it would only be today's date. You get the idea, you can, you can tinker with that. Um, so now what I would do is I'm going to get rid of the you know current relative date filter that's on all my worksheets. Instead, I'm going to put my last n days filter. So we'll say true. Let's apply this to other worksheets. So all of my summary tiles and those worksheets down below. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. So let's flip over here. I'm going to get rid of the old filter. And so then what I'm going to do now, uh, I'm going to show these parameters, right? So these parameters are, how should I say this? Um, parameters are workbook wide global values. So they're not 
in and of themselves necessarily tied to a single sheet. So what I could do is I could say, um, you know, show the last n days, and then I could say, you know, show my anchor date parameter, and let's put a horizontal container here under our title. So I will say, um, for text object in here, so I'll say something like, you know, display data for the last, uh, or maybe I'll just say something like this, select date range. I'll just keep this kind of generic. Okay. And then in select date range, now I'll say, you know, our anchor date, that would again, dynamically update to today's date after being published. Last end days, let me do a couple of quick edit widths here to make these look good. So 150, 150, cool. So then now, yeah, now I can update this, say, hey, actually, I want to start this on October 20th, and I want this to look back, you know, 30 days or 45 days, you know, whatever I want to pick, um, then, then I can do that. So I probably want to reinforce what I'm doing here. Notice the title, how are our business metrics doing in the last 30 days? So uh, I guess a couple options. Oh, I could like just reinforce exactly what's being said here. Another idea that I think could be kind of cool is it might be nice to say exactly what that range is. So I might say something like, how are our business metrics doing, you know, in the last 41 days anchored on 1020 and then parentheses that, you know, that would, it would tell you the date range. So it'd be like, oh, that's September 1st, October 20th, or you know, whatever that would be. So let me show you how you could sort of rig up a, a custom title like that. Okay, so let's grab where do we need to go with this last end days i'm going to put that on filters and say true now let's get my minimum order date and my maximum order date I'm just right clicking and dragging those and dropping those on text okay so now in my title i'll say you know how are our key metrics doing in the last now I'm going to insert the parameter last, whatever this is, 40 days ending. And now let's insert our anchor date parameter. And then maybe somewhere now I'll put the date range here. So I would say, okay, the minimum or the start of that range is this. And the maximum is that. I'm going to make that piece smaller. Um, the other part being bigger is probably fine. So I probably want to update this formatting. Notice it's like picking midnight hours, things like that. So. If I right click, I can do formatting. Um, I'm just going to try and pick some of the shortest, you know, length that I can because space is sort of of the essence here. Cool. So we're not actually going to show this little piece here to our users. Let me drag that opacity down. Let me turn the tooltip off. Our users really, this is basically going to be our dashboard title. Um, so let's grab that. Okay, I'm gonna pop that up there where the current dashboard title is. Let's get a few things moved around. That can go away, that can go away. Let's tell this thing to fit the entire view. Let's set the text to white because we can't really see it. Tell you, setting it to white is tricky though in, in the sense that um, you can't really see what you're doing very well uh, when you have the editor up. So it's a little bit of flying blind there. So now I can sort of cinch that up. Yeah, nice, see how that looks. So now what's cool is as I, you know, change my parameter, the little date range there is gonna change as well. It's good reinforcement for the user. Also, if you ever like screenshot this or export it or to a PDF, those sorts of things, it's really nice to have that range there, you know, not having your user do the mental gymnastics of like, what's 36 minus 1020, go back a month. How many days long was September? Like you don't wanna do that, right? So it's nice to get that all, all looking the way you want. So um, I got a couple of resources I'm gonna tell you about here in a moment. If you check out this info button up here in the top corner, we run Tableau classes every single month. Ollie and I are always teaching about Tableau desktop, Tableau prep, uh, calculations, things like this, uh, design all that good stuff. Um, we'd love to meet you there. It's a great way to dive deeper. In these YouTube videos, we're usually limited to like five, 10, 15 minutes to teach a topic. In those classes, we get to dive deep into either eight or 16 hours of content, depending on which class you pick. There's hands-on practices for you to follow along. There's discussions for us to work through stuff. We'd love to meet you there. I think it's a great way to continue to learn this tool.
Don't remember if I mentioned this earlier, I'm gonna be dropping a link to this workbook in the description. So if you wanna download it, kind of reverse engineer what I've done, um, then you can do that. So yeah, thank you all so much for uh, checking this video out. I hope it was helpful and uh, something that provides value for the uh, content that you're creating. If you have questions, uh, if you have other ideas for videos, please do let us know. Uh, we drop videos like this every week. We get a lot of inspiration from projects we work on with clients and classes we teach and good questions from students. We also get a lot of inspiration from you all. So thanks for being here and we hope to catch you again very soon.